welcome. You're watching Market Today on Business Today Television. I'm Sakshi Batra and with me is Shell Bhatnagar. Well, the markets are slipping to the day's slow. Very, very volatile trading action can be seen on the street right now. Uh, remember, at one point, we had uh, you know climbed above 22,300. Right now, we've slipped below 22,150. Uh, currently, 17 points of a dip can be seen on the Nifty 22,130. The Nifty Bank is the one that is dragging the street from the higher levels. 47,335, the current level, 150 points of a loss and large banks especially ICICI Access Bank HDFC Bank are the big laggards contributing to the downtick as far as the Nifty is concerned along with it of course uh, amid the uh, sugar controversy it's Nestle that's contributing about six to seven odd points to the downside as far as the Nifty is concerned and ITC also trending down as of now. Among the sectors, of course, apart from the Nifty Bank, we've seen the constituents, private banks and the financial services or space also slip into the red. Apart from this, it is the healthcare index that's also dipped and is contributing to the losses in the markets. Uh, along with this, autos have slipped into the red as well, along with FMCG. Uh, and uh, along with it, it's the oil and gas space as well. What, however, remains resilient in this market uh, metals, media stocks, uh, gains also being seen in the royalty space as of now. And some upticks can be seen on the IT pack as of now. Share. Let's look at, ladies and gentlemen, uh, stocks that are making news and are driven by strong tailwinds. Uh, we'll pay attention to the entire telecom pack for uh, a variety of reasons. Firstly, uh, it's the uh, enthusiasm that's driving uh, the FPO allocation for anchor investors in idea cellular actually Vodafone idea uh, that's been fairly strong and that has prompted a lot of buying to return into uh, two or three major stocks uh, let me just take the names of Vodafone ideas there three percent in front of you uh, it's uh, showing a lot of short covering uh, even in the FNO space you have Bharti Airtel the counter is uh, doing dramatically well as far as the nifty is concerned uh, it's the top gainer there and uh, this gain is driven by very very heavy volumes if you see uh, how many trades have happened about uh, 2.5 times the five day average for Bharti Airtel the counter is at a record high similarly uh, also on the upside today uh, was Indus Towers it's a rub off of uh, the strong uh, response that has been observed in the FPO and the anchor uh, allocations for idea cellular apart from that you know stocks like Valiant Communications are up five percent in fact the entire uh, telecom uh, uh, sector is abuzz with gains to some extent even reliance industries if you see uh, it has a major component for telecom in its uh, uh, main company and reliance was in the green uh, during the day at about 29.38 it's still up uh, uh, about six seven rupees I'll tell you what the intraday high on reliance was it was somewhere to the vicinity of 29.72 uh, this is one sector that's coming up uh, also, we need to look at uh, uh, the selling pressure that is now accelerating, ladies and gentlemen, on the Nifty. Remember, it's the weekly expiry for the index today. And we had a very, very strong bout of selling coming in exactly at 2 p.m. The high for the Nifty was 22,300 at that point of time. It slipped dramatically to 22,080. That was a fall of 165 points in a span of less than five minutes. These are typically expiry-led moves. And similarly on the bank nifty, you had a drop of about 560 points in the 10 minutes from 2 p.m. onwards. That selling pressure continues. Uh, but like I said, this is just related to the expiry. Uh, let's look at some other stocks that are making news. Ambuja Cement. This is where the owners, Ambani's, uh, I'm so sorry, this is where the owners, the Adani's, have put in another fresh round of uh, uh, inflows the stock uh, uh, now almost near record highs and gaining very sharp ground the third stock I'd like to refer to you is geo finance this is at a record high and is also uh, the top traded counter in the NSC 500 more than 2600 crores worth of shares have been traded and the stock is up four four and a half percent despite uh, the broader weakness that you are seeing in the markets so four or five stocks uh, as far as the radar is concerned Bharti Ambuja Cement and Geofinance. Infosys uh, is also something to be looked at for two reasons. Earnings later in the day today and this is also the top traded counter on the Nifty. Somewhere in the vicinity of uh, two, two and a half times the volume as far as uh, Infosys is concerned and Power Grid. 
uh, 3x volumes, more than 4 crore shares have been traded. The counter is in the green. Sakshi. Okay. Let's welcome our guest on the show, Swati Hotkar now joins in. She's the ABP Technical Research at Nirmal Bang. Uh, Swati, good afternoon. Welcome to the show. Uh, Nifty slipping even further. It slipped below 22,100 mark right now. What is the tone and the texture of the market that you see? Um, deeper correction from here? Uh, good afternoon, Sakshi and Mr. Benji. Uh, Nifty, even on the last few days, is what just hovering here. It's today's moving average, and today is about to give a closing below the same, which gives some sort of a cautious sign. But going ahead, 22,000 will act as a crucial psychological support. If it's break that level, then more selling pressure or say the profit booking is likely to be intensified, which might take a Nifty towards 21,800 levels. So the view is a bit cautious. On the higher side, 22,400 is acting as a very strong resistance levels. As long as Nifty trades below that level, the view will, will remain a cautious, but definitely it's stock specific markets. Even though we are likely to uh, witness some volatile trading session into the Nifty and the Bank Nifty, but there are the some mid cap counters are uh, really doing very well. So I will uh, uh, convey the message that try to focus more into the stock specific trading rather than the Nifty or the Bank Nifty trades and such. Okay. Top two stocks, Swati, that you can highlight for our viewers. Where would you be really, uh, you know, placing your bets as of now? Would it be on the buy side or the sell side? See, uh, as of now, as I said, uh, I'm, I'm looking for a stock specific momentum. As of now, I will be on the buy side itself. Uh, the first buy call is on the quest, uh, which is currently trading nearby 620 levels. Why I have recommended this particular counter on the technical uh, front? The chart has given the formation of the flat pattern and uh, today we have seen a very good momentum in this particular counter along with the price and the volume momentum. It has given the breakout of uh, 610 levels with a decent volume. So I believe it has a very strong potential to reach up to 650 to 670 levels on the high side. So one can take a long position in the quest uh, by keeping a stop loss of 600 levels on the downside for a target of 670. Another interesting buy call looks very good uh, on the technical front is a mother son. This particular counter is also doing very well on the weekly as well as on the monthly chart. Today we have seen a gap of opening and the counter has went up to 129 levels. Currently it's facing a little bit hit but even though on an intraday basis the stock is up by 1.8%. Uh, I am looking forward for a target of at least 150 to 160 levels on the higher side. So one can take a long position at the current market price. One can keep a strict stop loss of a 120 for a target of 150 to 160 levels. Okay. Uh, Quest Corp is something that we'll be looking at. And of course, uh, Sambardana Madhasan, this is the first stock that, uh, that we had discussed in early morning trade. Remember, this is again the tailwind that we are seeing in auto ancillary stocks ahead of uh, uh, Mr. Elon Musk's uh, uh, visit over the weekend he'll be meeting prime minister mr narendra modi and a whole host of shares uh, uh, are moving uh, very very strongly ahead of the event in particular excite uh, let's just uh, shift gears and look at the power sector very very heavy trades uh, uh, being seen on the likes of tata power near a record high jsw energy already at record high uh, stocks such as uh, sgbn uh, these are hydro power producers and nhpc they are also ticking away merrily uh, the reason is very simple uh, ladies and gentlemen the intense heat wave or actually the heat wave uh, that is uh, sort of accelerating across north india and parts of western india has increased uh, power consumption in the first 15 days of april to a record high it's up 10 uh, percent to 70.6 billion units and as far as the government of india is concerned uh, it's uh, planning for the april to june quarter to have a peak power consumption exceeding 270 gigawatts. Uh, Ms. Hotkar is with us. She'll tell us uh, her top uh, power trade that she has in mind. Any stock, Swati, that catches your intentions, uh, whether it's uh, uh, Tata Power, whether it's JSW Energy, Adani Power, what looks good on the charts? Yes, Shelji, two counters I would like to... Uh come into the limelight uh, that is one is the SJVM this particular counter is really doing very well on the technical front uh, the uh, this particular stock is trading above all the important moving average and also the interesting fact that it is trading in an upward rising channel so I would suggest those who are looking for a buy recommendation into this particular sector so one can go at the current market price for a buy call since the risk reward ratio is really favorable uh, one can go for a long at the CMP stop loss can be kept at 124 
I'm looking for a target of at least 142-145 levels only higher side. Second interesting counter is JSW Energy. This particular stock has just given the formation of the flat pattern and it's on the verge of the breakout of the same levels. Today the stock is almost up by 4% on intraday basis. Uh, on the candlestick pattern, today's open and low is almost the same. So whenever such kind of a candle structures gives the formations, uh, the bullish uh, trend is likely to be seen in the coming few trading sessions. Currently, the stock is trading at 625 levels. I am looking for a target of at least 660 to 670 levels for a short term period, whereas the support lies at 650. So, those are the two important uh, power sector calls one can have in the comment. Okay, so this is the theme that's uh, uh, running. Uh, uh, as far as markets are concerned, sectorally. Uh, Swati, your attention on geofinance, record high, breakout volumes, and a very, very strong uh, tailwind coming over the last two or three trading sessions. Uh, uh, is this a place uh, where a technical buy uh, should be warranted, or should one stay away because charts are overstretched? Uh, Sanjay, this particular stock is really doing very well on the technical front. Uh, it, uh, the stock is continuously trading in the upward rising channel and no wonder that the stock has entered into the overbought zone but still it doesn't show any kind of a reversal on the downside. The trend has remained intact on the higher side itself. Although the stock is trading at a nearby its all-time high levels, I'm looking for a target of a 400 but uh, in order to take a fresh position at the current level, the risk reward ratio is not favorable. So I will not recommend to take a fresh buy call at the current market price. But definitely, if the counters uh, show some sort of a correction towards at least 350 to 360 level, then one can think for a long positions, but not at the current market price. But those who are already holding this particular stock, one can keep a buy position skin tap for a target of 400 levels on my side. Okay, uh, Swati, uh, the top mover on the Nifty, Bharti Airtel, 5% higher in trade. Where do you see the stock really headed from here on? It's been in the thick of action amidst the entire focus in the uh, telecom space as well as it's now divested the Lanka operations in deal with Dialogue Axata, which has really led to this move in the morning trade. And it sustained that move and it's now at the day's high point as well. Yes, overall the setup of the uh, Bharti Airtel is really good on the technical front. From the last two months, if we check the data, the stock was uh, got stuck within the range of 100, uh, 1180 to within the range of 1220. And today it has given the breakout of the same with the very good volume. So I believe the stock has a strength to reach up to at least 1320 to 1360 levels on the higher side. So over the overall uh, setup of the technical chart is really positive. So I'm looking for a target of 1340 on the higher side, whereas the support will lie straight around. The immediate support will lie at around 1240 level. So as long as it's hold that support, the view will remain a positive. Okay, so that's as far as the positive view on uh, Bharti Airtel is also concerned. The other big mover in the FNO space today is uh, MCX. And I wanted to discuss that with you too. Uh, it's right now hovering about 3.5% higher in trade. It was buzzing uh, all along when we were seeing that the gold prices were constantly touching all-time high levels. It's been in the thick of action since a number of commodities are also touching record levels as far as the globe is concerned. How would you play MCX now? Yes, MCX is the very good uh, counter on the technical front. It's one of my favorite stock also. Uh, if we look towards the past data from the last 4-5 months, the stock has given a very spectacular rally from almost 1500 to 38-3900 levels. And as of now also on the monthly chart, it is on the verge of the formation of the flat pattern. So we might see some sort of a consolidation means the stock will form the body of a flat, flat pattern. But definitely the more upside it has uh, going, we are likely to witness in the coming few trading session and which might hit the its all time high comes to around uh, 4,070, almost that level, we are likely to witness a rally. So one can hold the long positions, but the fresh is not recommended at the current market price. Any dips coming towards to 3,700, one can definitely go for a long positions for immediate target of uh, 4,070 and about that level 4,200 can be seen very soon. Okay, uh, we are now at 2.45, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the last 45 minute wheel on the market begins. Remember, today is Thursday. It's the weekly expiry of the Nifty, and the last uh, one hour of trade is extremely, extremely volatile. You have 22,066. Uh, this is the lowest 
that we've seen on the Nifty today, uh, down about uh, 86 points. Uh, you also have 47,087 on uh, the Bank Nifty, down about 400 points. Uh, uh, the NSC 500, which denotes the broader sentiment in the market, has also slipped in negative territory, 20,400 for you. And uh, we track about 19 indices for you, ladies and gentlemen, and about half the market in terms of indices is now in the red. Uh, the top losing index is the Nifty Financial Services Index, down nearly a percent. The FMCG index, led chiefly by Nestle, uh, down another one percent. Uh, Nifty Bank and Nifty Pharma are down about 0.8 and 0.7 percent. These are the four or five top sectoral based losers. Uh, amongst the gainers uh, is, uh, you know, the metals index still holding on. The Nifty Next 50, this is the representation of the mid cap, uh, the largest 50 mid caps that we have, that's in the green, uh, about uh, a quarter of a percentage higher. And uh, the trend is now, you know, even Stevens. Uh, uh, 1,100 shares in the green, about 1,000 shares in the red on the National Stock Exchange. Uh, still about 40, 42 minutes of trade left. Uh, uh, let me just uh, look at some stocks uh, uh, that are making some noise on the volume side. That will give you an idea uh, as to where money is moving in, whether is it uh, whether it is on uh, the uh, uh, on the plus side or the minus side. Let's look at Mass Tech very rare that we discuss this talk uh, it's from the uh, mid cap it space 10 percent higher and about uh, 14 x the five day average volume six and a half lakh shares have been traded this is something to be uh, looked at what else is moving in terms of gains that can be looked into okay mother son is something that swati has already discussed let's look at a power grid uh, swati 280.75 fairly strong volumes 4.3 crore shares and a nice uptick after uh, a fairly decent uh, uh, profit booking what are power grids charts telling you yes, we have seen a very good volume in this particular counter today but the price is not able to sustain above 290 levels in the month of the february also we have seen that the stock was taking a very strong resistance uh, of 290 levels and same today we have seen the uh, intraday high almost the same levels. I believe once it manages to give the breakout of a 290 levels and sustain on the closing basis at least for one to two transition then we are likely to witness some positive momentum going ahead and the stock might hit the 300 or 320 levels on the high side but at the current level it's not uh, we are not getting a fresh breakouts on the high side so my view is a little bit cautious at the current market price. I will suggest to wait and watch, let the stock give the breakout of the on a high side, then only we can take a fresh buy call. Oh, but as of now, it has a very good support at around 275 levels. So those who are having any long position, they can hold, hold on with the strict stop loss over 275. Okay, so that's the view that is coming in on uh, uh, power grade. One pharma space stock I want to mark, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, normally, uh, we don't discuss this one because of the high ticket size. This is Mankind Pharma, a low of 21.36 in the morning and now 23.92, up about 4, 4.5%. Uh, this is accompanied by a fairly sharp uptick in volume. Uh, this is just the price that I'm marking because it was up 4, 4.5%. Uh, but apart from that, you know, it's a bit difficult to sort of uh, uh, preempt what's happening in the market. Uh, days low on TCS uh, uh, 3857, days low on Titan 3550, uh, days low on, uh, how should I say, okay, you know, these are stocks that are not worthwhile talking about. Uh, one more counter that uh, I want to refer in the past space is a company called Power India. Uh, this is uh, uh, at about uh, 8,210. Uh, this is the uh, this is now known as Hitachi Energy uh, at about 8193 it is at days high and again the intense heat wave uh, that is accompanying uh, uh, all parts of northern India now enveloping uh, the western India as well uh, is the reason responsible for this kind of an up move up for the second day yesterday's low was 7224 
today is almost 8200 sakshi Right along with Hitachi, uh, the other stock which we rarely discuss shell is IFB Industries. That's also moving to the day's high point as well uh, in the on the similar lines and uh, that stock is also inching higher. What are you really looking at uh, in terms of the consumer durables uh, space, Swati? Which stock looks attractive to you on charts? Yes, as we have uh, discussed on the Hitachi and IFB, uh, if we have to do the comparison analysis on the technical front between those two stocks, I will go, go for the IFP India. This particular counter is really doing very well from the last three to four months. As such, we are witnessing that it has taken a very strong support of uh, 1250 levels. And uh, on every now and then, we are witnessing a new high, new 52 big sign on this particular stocks. I believe it has a potential to reach up to again make a new all time high, which might take a stock towards to 1650 to 1700 levels. So, the overall setup is really doing very well on the technical front. So, one can uh, Hold their long positions as long as it's uh, maintained the support of 1450 levels on the downside for a immediate target of 1700 on the high side. Okay, along with this, Tata Consumer Products is now eking out some gains 0.2% higher. Crompton Greaves has found itself uh, a place in the FNO movers. It's 3.6% uh, 3 higher in trade. So, the entire theme is now uh, in the thick of action as of now. The other space that is clearly buzzing and holding on to gains uh, despite this overall weakness in the uh, benchmark indices is the metals pack. Hindalco is up by 1.5%. Tata Steel is up by half odd percent. JSW Steel up by 0.3% odd. Hindustan Copper up 3.2% in the FNO space as well. Um, Vedanta is up and about in trade as well. Whole host of these names that are finding strength as of now. Swati, to you, uh, metal space, how are you looking at it and which is the top stock as per your technical charts that you'd like to recommend? Yes, uh, on the technical front, metal stocks are really doing very well, whether it's a Hindalco or BDL or the Hincopper. Those three companies are really a star performer on the, on the metal packs. Fresh positions on the technical front, Hin Copper looks very good because risk reward is favorable. Stock is uh, trading within the range of a 340 to 380 levels. So at the current market price also one can go for a long positions because the technical setup is really uh, very uh, doing very well. Up on higher side, 380, 390 levels can be seen, whereas on a downside, 330 is acting as a very crucial support level. So those who are looking for a shorter term horizon or the long term horizon, definitely one can go for a pink copper. But VDL also looks very attractive on the technical front. No wonder we have seen a very good rally from almost 280 to 380 levels, 100 points rally within a span of a one month. Uh, any deep, if, the, the, if we see any correction or say the profit booking in the VDL, which might take a stock towards the 350 to 360 levels, that levels will be the very attractive level to take a buy call, but not at the current market price. But my view is definitely positive on those counter also. I'm looking for a target of at least 420 to 440 levels on the RSA. Okay. Uh, almost now about 35 minutes of trade is left as far as markets are concerned. Uh, let's uh, just do a deep dive into the Nifty. At the moment, what you see on the screen is 22,035. Not only is it the day's low, ladies and gentlemen, this is the lowest level uh, that we've seen on the index since March 27th. So that makes it a three-week low as far as prices are concerned. Uh, to the extent of about 900 points is the most recent correction that has come in. Uh, remember, we've seen a high of about 22,775 in cash, and we are almost uh, uh, about uh, uh, kissing 22,000. As far as the Bank Nifty is concerned, we are on uh, 47,100, and the most uh, recent high was, uh, uh, I think, 49,000. Uh, it was 48,882. So that's how the markets have corrected. I again repeat, the pace of the correction as also the angle of decline is very, very sharp. And that is what is uh, bothering me. Uh, and this is coming on the back of geopolitical tensions in the Middle East. Remember, last week it was Iran that attacked Israel. In the last five days, every single geopolitical power has done all it can to convince Israel not to attack Iran. We are on Friday tomorrow and there is a very, very difficult weekend ahead. Israel on its part has said 
that it will take revenge. What and how that revenge will work out, we don't know. But the markets are correct correcting, not only us, it's Asia as well as the US markets that are correcting in sync with each other. So that's how the situation is. Uh, we are waiting for Mr. Anand Tandon to join us. Uh, uh, Mr. Tandon, uh, uh, good afternoon and uh, a very warm welcome to you, sir. What a pleasure to host you on uh, uh, market today. Uh, I think uh, uh, no better day than to have a very well-known stock picking expert to help us through the last half an hour of trade uh, after uh, a nice decent correction of 900 points. How do you see sentiment on the last street? Well, thank you for having me. Um, obviously, as you can see from the index, the sentiment remains a little subdued. We've had a solid rally going into the last, till the last uh, couple of weeks. And now I think finally, uh, some bit of reality is catching up in the form of uh, the things that are happening around the globe, both uh, in terms of uh, equity markets as well as in the geopolitics. As you mentioned, there is a certain amount of danger that has played up in the Middle East. And while for the moment it looks like it may be contained, we never know. These things take their own time and uh, you know, they step, the direction in which it is headed is not particularly comforting. Uh, from an equity market perspective, uh, you know, the, uh, the US market too is showing signs of some weakness. Uh, we've had uh, you know, almost a week long fall in the uh, S&P there and uh, that is also beginning to show uh, signs of being overstretched. And we are seeing some of that reflected in India as well. So for the moment, it does look like the mood has shifted towards trying to take some profit off. And if you see a rally to actually, uh, you know, cut some positions and go light. Uh, and I think that's a reasonably stable and I mean, that's a reasonable, sensible strategy to follow, given that you've already made uh, significant returns from the market over the last few months. Very good afternoon to you, Mr. Tandon. Thank you so much for taking the time out for us. Uh, uh, you know, Infosys results would be coming in half an hour from now. What are your big expectations there uh, from the IT bellwether and for the entire sector as well? We did see subdued action despite uh, good numbers coming in from TCS. What is holding back the IT space? Well, obviously, the uh, overall position for the market in terms of IT is not very positive. The demand growth is somewhat subdued and will remain so. As TC has indicated, discretionary spreads haven't actually uh, come in through. And if you see where most of the uh, order book is coming from, it is mostly takeout deals, uh, which to my mind may be near term positive, but doesn't show augur well for the longer term. If the companies essentially are looking not just to outsource, but also to say that they want to cut out business because they feel, I think, to a large extent that the uh, growth in uh, generative AI, et cetera, may actually reduce the need for having people and they're using this opportunity to outsource uh, some of their existing staff. Uh, it is not necessarily very good uh, for what uh, the overall industry, especially the IT services industry, will uh, look at. Uh, the companies may be able to maintain some amount of margin, but you know what you could have done with one person, with five people, you are now being able to do with one, and that will slowly expand uh, in terms of the capabilities that the generative AI have. So you are looking at uh, you know lesser people required for programming, uh, less of a few people required for any of the even the creative work and it will undoubtedly put more pressure in terms of revenue so with a somewhat subdued uh, revenue market uh, revenue outlook uh, that you're likely to get uh, the fact that you have already got uh, these the industry trading at between you know 22 to 28 times depending on the company you want to pick and some of the smaller ones are even more expensive uh, i think that you know you have an early teens uh, which is the best case situation for earnings growth with a PE to G of uh, more than two, it is not particularly an attractive place to be. If the market were to fall, obviously it may be a outperformer simply because of the fact that it is less owned and it is a kind of defensive to the extent that you know there is no debt, there is reasonable amount of cash flow, governance issues are not there by and large for the industry. So it could be a kind of defensive uh, a part of the portfolio, but it's not likely to be giving you any great joy in terms of huge upside from here on, at least for the next 12 months. 
Okay, at least for the next 12 months, it won't give us a great joy, but definitely a defensive that uh, you need in your portfolio as of now. Uh, the other uh, bit I wanted to discuss with you is the entire action in the telecom space, starting with Vodafone Idea. Uh, how are you looking at the FPO opportunity for retail investors? And uh, of course, we've been seeing a slew of other names also coming up. Indus Towers has been constantly in the thick of action. Uh, Bharti Airtel is now moving up, of course, in the midst of tie-ups that are happening in Sri Lanka. How would you really look at this entire space, sir? So the whole bet in telecom is on te in terms of increasing our pool. And to, the, to that extent, obviously, the ones that are the most leveraged in terms of A, lower ARPUs, greater number of users are the ones that are likely to benefit the most because that's where the delta will come from. So you have already two established players, Bharti as well as Jio, uh, and both of them are doing quite well in terms of both the kind of uh, penetration they have in the market as well as the technology that they are using and the kind of uh, uh, license, I mean, the kind of uh, airwaves that they have already got license for. In all of this, uh, to my mind, uh, you know, it, Vodafone remains a distant cousin. Uh, you are looking at a company which has still a lakh and a half, thousand, one and a half lakh crore, I mean, uh, one lakh fifty thousand crores of debt. Your capital, your uh, equity is, I mean, your cap market cap is still, you know, maybe half of that or even lesser. After this uh, issue, you will just about be able to penetrate, you know, move up from 2G to 3G to some extent, at least in some of the segments, and you still have a large amount of payout that you have to do to the government. So even assuming that this money comes in from outside and the government stake falls below 32%, which it is today, uh, the likelihood is that next year it will go back to 30%. So there is constant dilution that is likely. There is still a technology challenge. There is still a challenge in terms of being able to compete with a, a bigger uh, companies. What exactly do you have in Vodafone which is better than the competition? So if in a commoditized sector, if you are not looking at being the price warrior, there is not much that you can do in terms of growth unless you have some exceptional services. Here is a company which is neither a price warrior nor does it have exceptional services. So I would imagine that you know while there is some excitement and buzz around this because of the large size of the issue, for a retail investor, it is better to stay with the well-known names who are market leaders. The benefit from there in terms of any ARPU expansion will be far greater than uh, trying to uh, do cherry picking. Okay, we'll just take a small detour into the market, uh, Ananji, and then I'll just get back to you. Uh, lots of uh, selling pressure now accelerating. Uh, we have uh, 22,000 on the Nifty. A close below 22,000, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, will not be something that uh, the bulls will appreciate. As far as uh, the bank Nifty is again uh, concerned, uh, about 47,099 for you. This is almost a 400 point down tick. Uh, if you look at the advanced decline of uh, uh, the Nifty in particular, uh, when we started the show, 35 stocks were in the green and uh, only 15 were in the red. Now the advanced decline is absolutely the other way around. Only 12 stocks in the green, 38 in the red and uh, all 19 indices are now in the red, ladies and gentlemen. Last 10-15 minutes of uh, uh, consistent selling has uh, put uh, the bulls completely on the back foot. Uh, Ananji, uh, when you look at uh, the auto ancillary space uh, for the medium term, lots of positive developments uh, uh, coming in. You have uh, uh, the likes of Maruti that's doubling capacity over eight years. You have new entrants uh, such as Tesla poised to uh, benefit from uh, growing demand for EVs. Uh, even, you know, erstwhile people who had left uh, the Indian automobile sector such as Ford are now making a comeback. Within the auto ancillary space, uh, what are the one or two stocks that look good to you in the medium term, sir? First of all, uh, you know, you have to look at the overall auto business and see where you are going to be making any money out of because when too many people expand capacity, it's not like the market demand is suddenly zooming. Uh, so you have companies, uh, almost every company has increased capacity and then there are unlisted players like Tesla as, as far as the Indian market is concerned, unlisted, uh, which are also coming in. So that you are looking at extremely higher, extreme higher levels of competition. Now, along with that, you have to recall that there is also technology change that is underway. So you are moving from IC engines to EV engines. And therefore, from there, that perspective also, we are not particularly sure which particular model will do well and so on. 
Now, in all of this, the obviously the auto ancillaries will benefit if the volumes were to go up, and the ones that are likely to benefit are those which are not going to be affected by the change in fuel. So, if you are looking for something which is uh, which is making uh, you know fuel sensitive products, obviously you don't want to be in it. Everything else is fair game. But the main issue that you will find in auto ancillary always is that if you are not an exporter, you are looking at a situation where you will get squeezed the moment the commodity prices rise because that's what you are seeing today. So on the sales side, you are looking at an industry where competition is going up, so the price will be an issue. And on the uh, on the supplier side, the commodity input prices are also beginning to go up, and therefore you know you will not be able to pass on all that to the OEMs in a hurry. So your margins for the auto ancillaries, those who are not supplying overseas, is likely to begin to get squeezed from here on. Most of the companies that we are looking at are actually pricing in the best case situation. So it's not as if it's a very comfortable position. Now, don't look at those which are exporting. Uh, the export market isn't also uh, going gangbusters. When you mentioned EV, the stock price of Tesla tells you all, you know, it has fallen off a cliff as it were. It is almost 40% down from the peak that it had made. And that is also reflected in the EV sales that you are beginning to see. There are a huge amount of unsold inventory of EVs around the world, which is one of the reasons why Tesla is looking at coming to India, which also means that, you know, the suppliers for these uh, vehicles are also going to face margin pressures. So while the industry in India is still relatively small compared to the global markets, uh, it's not as if it's in a particularly comfortable pace, assuming two things. One, commodity price increase, two, increased, uh, 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 you know, uh, selling pressure, I mean, uh, increased competition within the Indian market. So that doesn't mean, of course, there are no opportunities, but I, I can't name uh, particular companies for you at this stage. Uh, you have to look at those, as I said, which are actually expanding their EV portfolios. And there are quite a few out there, which I'm sure your investors can look at. Uh, Mr. Tandon, uh, we are seeing that the markets are slipping away. 22,000 has now been, uh, you know, given to the bears as of now. Uh, so the pressure is escalating in the markets. And all across the board, we are looking at uh, greater losses. I think uh, just about six, seven stocks remaining on the Nifty in the green side as of now. Where would you really look for adding, uh, uh, you know, or maybe where would you look for growth or value at this point in time in this current deeper correction in the market that we've been looking at for the fourth consecutive session today? So first of all, this is not a value market, right? India generally is supposed to be a growth market. There is hardly anything which is cheap, at least among the well-discovered stocks. You could always find something in the small cap space which can possibly be called cheap. But among the frontline companies, if you were to look even among the indices, the small cap index is more expensive than the large cap index. So therefore, if you're looking for valuation comfort, you're not likely to find too much, except for isolated spaces like, for example, the private sector banks, or even perhaps some of the public sector banks. Uh, that's the one space which has not been doing well and where the valuations remain somewhat less challenging, uh, given the kind of uh, a relative valuation that we've seen in the past. Uh, there is no doubt that the growth rates will somewhat moderate because of the fact that we are getting into the situation where deposit growth is not keeping pace with uh, credit growth. And uh, more importantly, the uh, you know it's not like you are able to increase uh, deposit rates uh, fairly significantly. So you will have a, a bit of pressure in terms of being able to expand because most of the banks have already, uh, their uh, credit to deposit ratio is well beyond what would require for a natural rate of growth. But that said, that remains perhaps one of the few value spots uh, within the market. For the rest of it, I think you are really betting on the trend in the market. And uh, for the recent times, it has large, largely been metals and commodities which have done well. So if you are really looking at uh, trying to invest in this market, I would still argue that energy remains a good space, as does some of the metal companies. But the metal basket, unfortunately, in India is, uh, is very thin. There aren't too many players, so you might have to look at uh, either the underlying commodity or international plays. Uh, so, in energy, uh, would you be still finding comfort with the OMCs or um, is, uh, uh, you know, the upstream companies also a possibility to be looked at even now, especially with the escalating geopolitical tensions? We do not know how uncertainty will claw back into the crude oil prices in the upcoming days. So, you know, uh, like you said, the problem is that, you know, downstream, if the oil prices go up, there is no benefit. Uh, 
uh, though the the margins that the companies have been reporting have been humongously high, the cracking margins. But uh, the uh, refiners are not going to benefit in a rising crude situation. And unless you are betting on the fact that the crude price falls, uh, you know the benefit is not going to come from there. So if you are looking at the uh, so you, lo upstream is logically where you would look at. However, unfortunately in India we have this uh, the ability of the government to tax what they call windfall gains. So beyond a, put, put a point of time, even an ONGC or an Oil India does not benefit from a rise in price because all the incremental benefit goes to the government. So you are again constrained from where you are, uh, you know, to what amount of extent you can actually benefit from a rise in price. On the other hand, a consistent rise in price will put pressure on the overall macros of the country. So it's a between the devil and the deep blue sea, as it were, in terms of the choices, you're not uh, left with very good ones. So again, uh, you know, you can either buy the underlying commodity or you could be looking at power sector as one of the areas, again, reasonably well priced, but still perhaps some steam to go uh, from an energy perspective. Otherwise, uh, you know, you are pretty much left with uh, holding the can in terms of some of the refiners, etc., which, as I said, is not going to give you much joy because of the fact that my own view is that the prices uh, will are unlikely to fall anytime soon as far as the oil com the commodity oil is concerned. Right. Uh, Mr. Tandon, you mentioned valuation comfort in the private sector as well as uh, PSU banks. Uh, let's have some uh, investment ideas for the medium term, say two years, two and a half years, three years uh, uh, in both these spaces. What do you like? So I think, you know, to my mind, if you are looking slightly longer term, you are again looking for those companies which have the best uh, deposit franchise. And uh, therefore, the private sector banks, to my mind, stand out among the public sector banks still pretty much. Uh, State Bank of India, you could argue that the smaller banks will probably show greater delta in terms of, uh, you know, the near term flows. But I think if you are looking at it long term, you are looking at those companies which have the technology, the growth potential and the bandwidth to be able to pick up and uh, add to price uh, more aggressively. So again, you are back to the good old uh, set of companies like, you know, NHGFC, Access, ICICI, Kotak, SBI kind of names. Uh, you know, at different points of time, uh, different ones become more attractive. So, you know, that is something that uh, you have to de decide at the time you invest. But uh, that should be my basket that you are really looking for. Okay, so top five uh, among them, uh, India's largest uh, bank, which is SBI, and of course the top four private sector banks. Uh, uh, Mr. Tandon, uh, how do you see this uh, uh, very sharp rise in gold prices as also silver over the last, uh, say, 15 trading sessions or so. And uh, is there any merit in uh, playing them on the equity side? You know, maybe a look at the CSB Bank, look at uh, the two gold financing companies. How do you see the precious metal space? Well, obviously, the precious metal has done exceedingly well, and not just near, over the near term, but if you were to look at gold prices and compare them, for example, with an S&P 500 of the U.S., you will find that you know they have pretty much in dollar terms done the same uh, more or less the same over a 20 25 year period as well so you know it does tend to track, keep track largely because of the fact that it's a hedge against inflation and therefore uh, what the market is telling you is that a large part of the gains that you see in the market are actually out of inflation not necessarily coming out of uh, anything great that the market is doing so should it be part of your core portfolio? Absolutely. I think you need to be able to diversify. The only question is at how much. And I would argue that you are still looking at single digit allocation at best, or maybe less than, uh, you know, not very high single digits at that, because it's not as if, uh, you know, it was going to be something that is uh, going to protect you too much in case there is a global meltdown. But at the same time, it is a bit of a diversification from your uh, regular investments. Now, coming to India, again, there are issues in terms of how you'd be able to buy it. So the simplest for a retail investor would have been to actually buy the RBI bond. Uh, that is, the, uh, the gold bonds of RBI are the best because they give you an interest rate, uh, they give you uh, a tax advantage when you were to sell it and so on. But if you are looking at trying to get into it and trade, today I would imagine gold is fairly expensive. Uh, as opposed to that, gold mining companies are not doing uh, very well. In fact, internationally, if you look at it, the gold mining index is probably trading at a valuation of around $500 an ounce as opposed to where the gold gold price is, which is almost three, four times, four times more than that. So, you know, you are actually able to buy gold miners far, far cheaper at an assumption that the price can half and then half again. 
So to my mind, that remains one sector. And there is a mutual fund in India which also tracks some of these uh, companies. So from a retail investment point of view, you may want to look at uh, some of this, uh, you know, the international gold mining plays. Uh, you have to keep in mind, of course, that that gets treated like a debt investments given our current tax rules. And therefore, to that extent, it's not an equity investment uh, as far as the tax authorities are concerned. Right. Uh, almost now 3.16 uh, uh, p.m. We have uh, 14 minutes of uh, trade left on this uh, uh, expiry day. There is absolutely no let up on uh, uh, the selling pressure. You could just uh, call it a build up of shorts or uh, you could uh, call it fresh selling. From 22.150, uh, which was at uh, 2.25 p.m., uh, there has been a single one-way unidirectional fall that is happening now below 22,000. Uh, what's uh, going to work probably is the third intraday support of uh, 21,940. Let's see whether that holds on the Nifty or not. But uh, across the board, uh, so many screeners running on my screens, uh, all of them are showing a sign of red uh, within uh, the universe of trackable stocks. Uh, Mr. Tannen, one of the biggest w wealth creators in the market was the PSU pack uh, over the last uh, five, seven quarters or so. Anything uh, that catches your fancy within uh, the government-backed companies, uh, some of them, of course, uh, have hit record highs and some of them are now near 14, 15, 20-year highs. How do you see this sector? Several sectors involved there, right? Effectively, there are three sectors that you're really looking at. One is the railways-related PSU, the other is the energy-related PSUs, and the third is the defense-related PSUs. These are the three profitable sectors. The rest of them don't really make money. So within this, you know, all the companies are fairly expensive. As we've already discussed uh, the defining business, so I'll leave that out for a moment. Uh, railways, obviously, the order books look reasonably uh, strong, and therefore, you will get a sustained kind of... Uh, uh, growth number, but remember, none of these companies have been able to show the expert the ability to ramp up their sales. If you look at the sales growth that you will see, you will still get the same uh, single digit or mildly double digit, maybe teen levels growth at the best in terms of the top line. With that kind of uh, growth, it's not that you can expand your uh, profitability uh, dramatically. So the only the major uh, place where you will actually benefit from in terms of uh, let's say railway growth is coming in through the companies which are actually manufacturing the rolling stock or the uh, signaling equipment or the safety equipment and so on, which are all the ABVs and, uh, you know, uh, some of the uh, wagon manufacturers, etc. in India. And many of them are privately owned. So you could actually play that, but to my mind, that's a, a deal that has already been, that's well priced. The second part is the defense. Now here you have a monopoly buyer and a monopoly supplier. And therefore, to the extent that, you know, our growth rates in terms of the uh, assumed uh, uh, order book uh, continuing to grow at 10-15% uh, for the next several years, uh, assuming that the government, the government continues with its current strategy of trying to modernize and to try and do it within the country, your order books are uh, likely to remain fairly strong. Uh, again, the valuations are not cheap, but the upside that one can see there is that at least some of these companies have started to be able to export and the export numbers are becoming a little meaningful in relation to their uh, size. So if you were to still look at PSUs and want to hold on to the portfolios, uh, I would argue that defense is one of the places that you could actually uh, continue to hold on. Fresh money buy, you, I think you have to time it a little better. But if you are looking at next five years, maybe it's still uh, something that you might want to hold on or buy more. Hey, defense is where you would be bullish on. But sir, the other space, um, you know, within the PSU pack is also the power space that's garnered all the attention and the space has really performed, be it the power producers, uh, the transformers, be it the power finances as well. And now uh, with, of course, uh, the Euro peak of summer coming soon and IMD's indication of a normal monsoon, but at the, as, at the same time, cautions of heat waves coming in. How would you really look at the entire power space? And and is this a story that you would like to play for the long term, sir? So power demand will certainly continue to be robust. Uh, you know, we had a period, let's say five years ago, where many of the power generators were struggling to find buyers. 
I think that period is now firmly behind us, at least for the near future. In, when I say near, I'm talking about the next five years. And, uh, you know, many of the companies that we see today in the market, including the PSUs in terms of generation, are doing quite well in terms of NTPC, particularly, for example, is going to add uh, not only just a capacity, but also renewable plus thermal capacity, which will make them a fairly attractive company to look at. To my mind, because of the fact that these are also regulated entities and therefore uh, their profits and their returns are all fixed, uh, more or less because of the kind of nature of business, it's quite possible to predict. And I think the market is doing a fairly good job of perhaps valuing it in an optimistic manner. So uh, while these companies will continue to show growth, I, the question is how often do you want to keep valuing the same growth uh, just because you know you are looking at a certain growth rate that will translate into revenue growth down the line, that will uh, translate to profit growth down the line. But if you've already priced for all of that, then there isn't that much that you can expect to make from here on incrementally. And that would be my argument for most of the regulated entities in the public space in terms of distribution. The same thing goes for the, the transmission space. Take, for example, power grid. It's not as if there is any surprise among the, about the amount of grid that power we need. Uh, and therefore, you know, it is uh, fairly predictable about the kind of earnings growth you're going to get. The only thing is how much will you capitalize in a particular year to the extent that power grid can do better than, uh, uh, you know, what is forecast, at least in the near term, you may see a little bit of upside, but I'm not that uh, bullish in terms of saying that, you know, uh, is the business good? Absolutely. Is it going to be strong? Very, very strong. Will it generate absolute great cash flows? Yes, no question about it. Is it priced to perfection? Almost. The financing pace, I don't particularly uh, fancy. One, they are already run up again. The fact of the matter is that not too long back, many of these companies were struggling. And the argument at that time that was being made was they are all single sector exposures and therefore, uh, you know, much more risky. It is not surprising that market has a short memory and suddenly that is no more a concern. But that should be a concern because you are looking at a single sector exposure and what looks like a great exposure today uh, may not look like a great exposure five years from now, but you cannot suddenly withdraw your money. So you have to look at a uh, slightly longer term. And I would think that when you are a lender, one of your key requirements is that you have a portfolio which is diversified, much like you are an investor. Uh, you know, you cannot run a single stock portfolio if you are a serious investor. So therefore, you cannot run a single uh, sector portfolio if you are a, a distributor, if you are a financer. And to my mind, therefore, most of the financing companies which are in that space are disqualified from being uh, something that you should be looking at other than tactically, uh, which basically brings you to uh, the place which is the most attractive space, which is storage. Today, one of the challenges in terms of renewables is the fact that you do not have storage capacities. And one of the most exciting areas of work that is happening is in terms of pumped storage capacity that many of the companies are putting up. Unfortunately, that is hidden within the companies that we have talked about. So NHPC has plans for pumped storage, so does NTPC. And uh, these are companies that you will not be able to, they are not going to be large enough, the pumped storage capacities are not going to be large enough to make a material impact in terms of their bottom line. So while that's an exciting sector, it's a difficult sector to play in the, in the public sector space. So essentially, what you can do is buy the commodity side, which is Coal India and the likes, where, you know, because of the fact that the commodity prices are looking like they're going up and some of these companies may be able to ramp up production, you could still have some delta. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the last five minutes of trade are upon us uh, as far as uh, Thursday's weekly expiry is concerned. I believe uh, there will be a mild, mild uh, bout of short covering of shorts, which essentially means that you will see the nifty close above 22,000. Uh, points uh, uh, we've had very very intense selling for the last uh, one one and a half hours actually two two and a half hours and uh, some of those shots uh, some of those profits will be booked and that will prompt the nifty to close above 22,000 for today's weekly expiry uh, let's also uh, just do a small detour into the markets and uh, look at how the situation is the bank nifty is uh, 350 points lower 47,150 there is 19 of 19 indices are down in the red. Uh, the advanced decline on the NSC 500 is 300 stocks in the red, 200 in the green. Overall on the National Stock Exchange, bears have a front foot, 1150 shares in the green compared with 946 in the red. Let me just try and do something unusual for you today, ladies and gentlemen. I'll uh, focus on uh, uh, sellers only uh, for a very brief moment 
and look at any stock uh, uh, that might have hit uh, a circuit on the lower side. Okay, I have Schneider, 5% lower, 755. I have Spark. This is the research arm of Sun Pharma, 5% lower at 350. Uh, what else catches my interest? Okay, we'll avoid all these names. Uh, no point talking about them. Okay, most active counters, NSC 500. Uh, surprise, surprise, it's Infosys. It's 1% higher, 1424. Remember, we are going into uh, the evening where Infosys will declare its numbers. 3,100 crores worth of uh, uh, transactions done on Infosys. The counter is at November lows. Geofit strength, 5% higher, 379, 2,800 crores worth of shares traded. Bharti Airtel, 5% higher, 1271, 2,500 crores worth of shares traded. A bit of a profit booking in Excite, thank God. 1.5% lower, 451. Remember, the counter was at a record high. It's run up for the six days in a row. ICICI Bank, Axis Bank uh, uh, down about 2.6, 1.1% respectively. No let up in uh, Vedant, 33.5% three, three higher, 391 for you. Uh, just dial, 13% higher, 1014. Tata Steel, you are up about a percent, 161.15. What's closing at days high? A company called Sapphire, I am not sure if I remember it well, 2.8% higher, 1541. In terms of uh, losers on the NSC 500, you have Sterlite Technologies down 8%, 130.7. Indraprasth Gas down 5%, 431. You have Seat Limited down 4%, uh, 2493. And you have Apollo Hospitals slipping 4% lower, 6080. Uh, how about uh, the NSC 100? Let's look at the mid-cap losers today. Uh, that will give you an idea about what the market is thinking. In terms of mid-caps, Max Healthcare is down 4%, 790. Ashok Leyland has slipped 3.5%, 170. Z Entertainment is down 2%, 144.85. TVS Motors and Lupin about a percent each in the red. Sriram Finance down 1%, 23.84. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the broad thrust of what markets have done on this weekly expiry day. We now move into the last week of uh, April, between April 18th and 25th, is where it will be an earnings intensive week. Let's hope that the markets turn back in the, red, in the green. We have about an 800 point correction on the Nifty and a 2300 point correction on the Bank Nifty over the last one week or so. And if I may add the correction, and the angle of decline is very steep. Sakshi. All right. Um, uh, Mr. Tannen, uh, last word from you. Uh, going forward from here, how do you uh, advise investors and uh, um, you know participants to really look at the markets? What would be the sane advice in this current volatile trade, especially as we get into the thick of action of elections now? Well, you know, elections don't matter in the long term. But in the near term, they can actually create a lot of volatility and therefore you need to have some dry powder in case there is some volatility that will give you a good buying opportunity if the market were to fall down. The market is priced to perfection in terms of both the earnings as well as the election outcome. So therefore, there could be potential for, uh, for uh, you know, some profit taking. It would be advisable to either reduce your position or to create some kind of portfolio hedges so that there is some amount of uh, protection that you have going into any kind of uh, event. And uh, that would be my recommendation now, lighten up. Uh, but unless you are a, absolutely a new investor in the market, I have no, no allocation at all. But for anyone who's been in the market for a while, lightening up and keeping some dry powder would be a good, uh, this would be a good time to do it. Okay, keep some powder dry at this point in time. Many thanks, Mr. Tandon. Truly appreciate your presence on Business Today Television. Hope you have a great time. Till the time we meet Thank next on the street. Uh, while closing ticks on your screen, 22,044, 103 points lower for the Nifty. The Nifty Bank has slipped further at the lowest point of the day. 0.75% of a decline coming in on this one. 355 points of a loss, 47,129 as uh, the last level on the nifty bank as of now sectorally speaking which are the other sectors that really slipped into the red along with the nifty bank you did see the auto index the financial services the fmcg index as well 
along with it we did see the pharma and the healthcare pack also uh, cutting some positions towards the end of the session the biggest drag really came in from the healthcare pack 1.4 percent decline for this one and barring i would say just media space it metals PSU banks, rest of the sectors did slip into the red uh, with sharp fall being seen across the board on uh, banks, financial services, PSU banks and the private banks as well. Financial services also down by 0.8% odd or so. In terms of the top stocks that declined in trade today, the ones that contributed most to the nifty fall, HDFC Bank 23 points, ICICI Bank 17.8 points, Axis Bank 17.7 points, ITC down 14 points, uh, Titan about 10 points and Nestle about 6 points in trade as far as the decline is concerned. The stocks that maintained or bucked the trend even in this week's set of the markets, Bharti Airtel closing as a top mover on the Nifty today, 4.2% higher, Power Grid follows, 2.5% up, Bajaj Auto, Hindalco, Infosys, LTI, Mindtree, Tata Steel, these were the top movers. In the FNO space, of course, it was ICSL Lombard General Insurance that we discussed in the morning trade, 4.8% higher in trade, MCX, Vodafone, Bharti Airtel, I, Indus Towers as well as uh, PVR Inox that uh, jumped up towards the end of the session as far as the FNO movers are concerned. With that, we wrap up this special trade. Uh, many thanks for joining us on to this edition. But do stay tuned on to Business Today TV as action continues on the other side. With Infosys coming out with the earnings, we will do a deep dive and decode the earnings as and when they come about. The press conference will follow soon. And of course, uh, stay tuned for today's uh, Easynomics as well, which will decode and dissect the Nestle controversy as far as sugar is concerned for all our viewers. Many thanks for joining us on to this uh, edition. As one of India's most diversified conglomerates, the Aditya Birla Group has con constantly and consistently been at the forefront of India's path towards economic development, growth, and prosperity. Over the past quarter century, more than half of the world's GDP growth emanated